Hi, I'm Patrick McLennan with a preview of next week's Unmissable Soaps. When last seen, Cat and Elfie Moon had saddled up the wagon and were heading off over the horizon to make their fortune in America. But next week, cue drumroll, the back, trailing dark clouds in the shape of two thugs. The week starts with Cat turning up, in disguise, and telling Mo that Elfie's dead. But heavies Lee and Jono show up and menace her for £40,000. Who should then walk through the door but Elfie? And he's no ghost. When the thugs have no joy recovering a cash, they kidnap baby Lily. But Elfie and Billy suddenly burst in, pretending to be CID, and Lee and Jono do a runner, without Lily and with only some of the cash. Pregnant Cat's got some explaining to do. Why did she tell Mo that Elfie was dead? If the baby's not Elfie's, whose is it? And why are she and Elfie separated? The plot thickens, as it does for Heather and Minty, when Sam reappears and makes another bid for Minty. The big lummox has been here before, of course, but sadly he's smitten, and when he breaks Heather's heart by running out of George's christening, it's curtains for them. But who pulls the trigger? Next, we visit Weatherfield. Natasha's got herself in a ripe pickle. First she got pregnant, but terminated it because she feared Nick didn't want it. Now she wants to get pregnant because he's gone all clucky and wants to be a dad. Even worse, ghastly Gail sneaks a peek at her medical records and learns the truth. Natasha feels she has to confess, but just as she builds up the courage, Nick proposes. Of course she says yes, but she doesn't count on yappy Gail confronting her about the phantom pregnancy. When Gail realises she hasn't set Nick straight, she decides to do it. Nick's understandably livid and ends their relationship with tragic consequences. Natasha heads home broken and empties a bottle of pills. But Nick finds her just in the nick of time and she's rushed to hospital with Nick and Leanne by her side. Meanwhile, love's young dream turns sour for Sophie and Sean when a dodgy bloke makes a move on Sophie who desperately phones Rosie. She and Jason drive to Cumbria to rescue her and the Websters are delighted when she returns. Don't presume this story has a happy ever after. Finally, it's Emmerdale. There's something in Andy Sugden that we can't quite see because despite his shocking history with women, they keep going back to him. Ex-wife Katie seems to be rekindling her enthusiasm for the farmer and she's becoming more than just a good friend. After he emerges from an anger management session, he blames all his past problems on her, the old romantic. And when she argues back, he throws a cup in fury. But Andy feels guilty for his tantrum and apologises, a gesture that makes her fall into bed with him. Not that he should get his hopes up, because later she tells him it was a one-off. She's lit the torch paper, now stand well back. Meanwhile, Aaron enters a world of pain when he sells a dodgy car to a customer, then refuses to refund the money. Soon Rodney and Terry's office is vandalised, along with all the cars on the garage forecourt. Then Aaron tries to ward off Mickey with the help of Clyde, only to find he's got a bigger dog who monsters Clyde and he has to be put down. You'd think Aaron would realise he's bitten off more than he can chew, but no, he vows to get even.